Welcome to this video on fiber optic communication. We will be looking into the history and evolution of optical fiber for communication purpose. I am Dr. M. Sumati, Professor of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Can you guess since when light would have been used for communication? So, a thousand years back? No. Since time immemorable, mankind has used light in the form of fire, smoke, to signal distress and danger. It has been recorded that in the 8th century, Greeks used fire beacons to convey the message of victory in a war. The first optical communication system can be considered to be optical telegraphy, invented by the French engineer Claude in the year 1792. Optical telegraphs are nothing but semaphores mounted on towers. And they have two arms as you can see in the picture. And the position of the two arms can be varied to represent the various alphabets. And using this, messages were transmitted over long distances. And in fact, optical telegraphy was popular on the European continent for nearly 40 years until electrical communication came into existence with the invention of telegraphy by Morse and telephony by Graham Bell. With that, electrical communication came into usage and became popular. In 1880, Alexander Graham Bell invented the photophone and he considered this to be his most significant and one of his most important inventions. Using photophone, he transmitted voice using light over a distance of 213 meters with air as the medium. But since air was used as a medium, atmospheric disturbances such as fog, mist, rain affected the transmission of the signal and therefore photophone was not a reliable mean mode of communication. And in 1899, Marconi invented wireless radio and with this radio frequencies from the very low frequency to the micro frequency were used for various purposes and wireless radio became popular thereafter. In the meanwhile, research was going on in fiber optics and optical communication. In the 19th century, it was known that light could be guided along a jet of water by the principle of total internal reflection. And in 1960, laser was invented. And in 1970, a major invention happened, that of gallium arsenide semiconductor laser. In those days, the loss in a fiber was very large to the tune of 1000 dB per kilometer. That means light could be transmitted in an optical fiber over a few meters. Therefore, fiber optics was mainly used for medical applications. And nobody considered this as a serious contender for telecommunication purposes. And not until in 1964, Charles Cow suggested that the loss in a fiber was due to the impurities present in it. And if the impurities are removed, the loss can be brought down drastically. A few years later, three scientists working at Corning Glass Works manufactured a fiber with a loss of around 20 dB per kilometer. This was a huge advancement, moving from a fiber with 1000 dB per kilometer loss to 20 dB per kilometer loss. And in fact, Charles Cow was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2009 for his proposal. And he is considered the father of fiber optic communication. In later years, the manufacturing technology improved and the fibers with a loss of around 0.2 dB per kilometer were manufactured in the year 1979. And this uh, loss of 0.2 dB per kilometer is close to the lower theoretical limit due to Rayleigh scattering. And in fact, fibers that are manufactured today have an attenuation or loss close to this value. So the two important factors, one is invention of semiconductor laser and two, manufacturing of fiber, fiber optics with very low attenuation, they cause revival of optical fiber for communication purpose. And there is no looking back since then. In fact, fiber optic communication has revolutionized the telecommunication sector, supporting the and providing the large bandwidth requirements of the internet. The electromagnetic spectrum, you can see in the first figure, 
ranging from the low frequency to the higher frequencies and the uh, visible spectrum falls in the 400 to 700 nanometer range and the close to that is the IR or infrared spectrum with a near and far IR and this is the region where optical fibers operate. And the second chart gives the operating band of optical fiber. The first window centered at around 850 nanometers. The second window called the operation band or the O band is centered at 1310 nanometers and has an attenuation, attenuation lesser than the first window. And the uh, next is the extended or E band where the attenuation is slightly higher due to absorption due to hydroxyl ions. Therefore, fibers with low water content are used in this band. Then the short wavelength band followed by the conventional or C band centered at around 1550 nanometers and WDM technology is used here. Then the long wavelength band and the ultra long wavelength band. This table gives the various bands ranging from O band to the U band, their description and the wavelength range for the graph that we have seen in the previous slide. Moving on to the evolution of fiber optic communication. The first generation in the year 1980 operated in the wavelength of 850 nanometers with supporting a data rate of 45 Mbps with a repeater spacing of 10 kilometers. The second generation operated, operating at 1300 nanometers, here both the attenuation and dispersion is lesser than the previous generation. Therefore, the data rates improved greatly to 1.7 Gbps over a distance of 50 kilometers. The third generation operating at 1550 nanometers, here the attenuation is a minimum, but the dispersion is slightly higher compared to the previous generation. Therefore, dispersion compensation techniques had to be used and hence single mode lasers or dispersion shifted fibers were used and the data rates improved to 10 Gbps over a repeater spacing of 100 kilometers. The fourth generation operating in the C band centered at 1550 nanometer saw the advancement of a new technology that is WDM wavelength division multiplexing. In WDM, a number of wavelengths are multiplexed and transmitted along a single fiber. Each wavelength carries data at different data rates. And the total capacity of the fiber is the aggregate of the capacities of the individual wavelengths. This along with EDFA, that is erbium doped fiber amplifier, which could amplify signals in the optical domain itself. And it also operated in the C band. Therefore, WDM plus EDFA improved the data rates tremendously. In fact, during that period, the data rates doubled every six months and data rates of one terabits per second was possible. The fifth generation saw the DWDM technology that is dense wavelength division multiplexing, wherein the spacing between adjacent wavelengths was reduced by advancements in technology. And in addition, QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation where phase and amplitude are used and polarization division multiplexing and coherent detection. So all these technologies improve the data rate to 64 terabits per second. The inter internet and its bandwidth hungry applications keep demanding more bandwidth. Therefore, scientists and engineers working on the communication medium, especially fiber optics, fiber optic communication, need to find new technologies to exploit the bandwidth available in an optical fiber and support the internet. In that way, the sixth generation, the current generation, uses a technology called SDM or space division multiplexing. Here, a number of uh, the fiber supports a number of modes and each mode carries WDM signals. There are two types. One is multi-core fiber wherein multiple cores are fabricated along a single cladding along the fiber and each core carries a mode which has WDM signals. And the second one called the few mode fiber which comprises of one a single core on a cladding and this single core supports spatial modes which and each of these modes have WDM signals. Thereby, the data rates improved greatly to 1 petabit per second, that is 1000 terabits per second. 
So, from the first generation in 1980 supporting 45 Mbps, we were moved to the sixth generation where petabits per second is possible. So, in this video, we have seen the history of optical communication where light has been used in the form of fire to convey signals and messages to the usage of fiber optics. And then the two major technologies, one is invention of semiconductor laser and then next manufacturing of optical fiber with low loss. And then the spectral regions or the frequency over which a fiber optic operates. And finally, the evolution from the first generation to the sixth generation. These are the references. Thank you.